Good morning, everybody. Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. Thank you for joining us. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We get started. Romans chapter 11. Romans 11, beginning in verse 25. The mystery of Israel's salvation is what Paul is writing about here at the conclusion of chapter 11. If I would be lying if I didn't say I'm glad to be done with 9, 10, and 11 in the book of Romans. Uh, Those are some hard chapters, Uh, and so probably if we worked our way through them, if you've been with us, you probably know uh, I've struggled through them to some degree, and uh, they're challenging. But I'm going to pick this up here in verse 25 of Romans chapter 11. Helpful stuff, fruitful stuff, but difficult stuff. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers, general term, brothers and sisters. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all of Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As regards to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as regards to election... They are beloved for the sake of their forefathers, for the gifts of the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to them, they may also now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. All the depths and the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? Or who has been a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now in this section, he basically makes a comment that's kind of difficult and challenging. But I think it's important, the general gist of what Paul was saying here in this comment is that Israel will one day be given the opportunity to be saved, that a partial hardening of their hearts has come upon them. Not in full, but a partial hardening of their hearts has come upon them until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. That does not mean that there aren't Jews who see the light of Christ and place their faith in him. In fact, we know that there are many Jews who have throughout time trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah, Paul being one of them, Peter, James, John, etc., the 12 disciples. But it wasn't the norm, it was rather the exception. The norm for the Jewish community was to reject Jesus as their Messiah. Paul says in the previous section that that is because um, the gospel was going out to the Gentiles and God intentionally went through that hardening of heart process in order to allow the gospel to go out to the Gentiles so that Gentiles may be saved. Now he says in that partial hardening has come, was intentional and will be concluded when the fullness of the Gentiles come to faith. In other words, when all the Gentiles are brought into relationship with God through Jesus Christ that God has specifically chosen to be his, then the deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. Then the Jews will come and respond to the gospel of grace. They will come by faith. They will recognize Jesus as the Lord and as the Messiah, and they will place their faith in him. He says the gospel, they're enemies for the sake of the Gentiles, but regards to election, right, to God's choice of them as his chosen people, that they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. And the gifts of God and the calling of God are irrevocable, meaning God cannot take away his promise that he made to save his people. And so the challenge for us is to recognize if we are Gentiles, not Jews by birth, to recognize that God has called us by grace but also to hold out hope for those who are Jewish by birth that they too will be resp- will have the opportunity to respond to the gospel of Christ. We know that we take the gospel to them now. For the hardening is not in full, it's partial. In the sense of there are those who would respond now and know the blessings of Christ. Then there are opportunities for others to come to faith at different points, but we know that God is sovereign over it all. And that's ultimately Paul's point. And so he ends this section with all the depths of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, how inscrutable his ways. It is to him, by him, and through him, and for him all things exist. So we may not understand this mystery. It's a mystery by virtue of its definition to us. 
We are thankful that God has chosen to bring us into relationship with him. We are thankful that God is faithful to fulfill the promises he has made. How and when he does that is up to him. Let's give him praise. Let's be thankful. Let's not be haughty. But let's do like Paul and stop and say, you know, how great and wonderful and deep and amazing are your riches and the wisdom of your knowledge. We don't understand it, but we know this. You are the one to whom all things exist and will bring all and, and to whom all things will bring glory. And we do the same. So we trust you in it all and we give you praise and we pray for people to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. We pick this up, chapter twelve with being living sacrifices. See you soon. Mm-hmm.